Hi, my name is Alana and today I'll be talking you through the Start Arduino kit. So it's full of loads of components with loads of different functions. I'll be showing you how the different components work with little examples as well as we talk you through them. So you'll get a nice overview and a deeper context of what each of the components do. So let's have a look inside the box. You get your Arduino Start Kit insert, which gives you an introduction to everything. Then you have your components are split into different categories. So one of the categories is resistors. One of them is LEDs, 10 of each, green and red. Another category is servo, and it's little add-ons. And the last category is inputs and outputs. You also have your cable for your battery, some jumper wires, USB cable to connect it to your computer, from your Arduino to your computer, your breadboard, and of course the most important part, your Arduino. So the Arduino is the most exciting part of the kit. An Arduino is a tool for creating gizmos and gadgets that can sense and control the physical world around you. It's intended for anyone making interactive projects and make the, makes the process of prototyping quick, efficient and fun. An Arduino's brain is the microcontroller, which is this part here. So the microcontroller reads inputs like switches and sensors to create outputs like flashing lights, making sounds and moving motors. Arduino is widely used by hobbyists, artists, engineers and young people around the world. It is an open source physical computing platform which is built around a programming language called C. Programming is essentially about describing how to do something. It is a lot like breaking down the steps to do something and then writing them out in that order. In order to program the Arduino, you will need some software which you can download from the Arduino website. The Arduino software is called the Arduino IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. This is what you use to write your code and program the Arduino board. And the next component is the breadboard. A breadboard is great for making temporary circuits and prototyping, as they require absolutely no soldering. The metal strips are springy, so that when you poke a wire into the hole, the clip grabs onto it, like this. So let's have a look a bit more in detail how the breadboard works. So this is your breadboard, and here's a nice little diagram of it. On the back you can see how they're connected with the metal. So these five, these five are connected, and the long rails down the side. So, for instance, this is all negative, connected all the way down. This is all positive, connected all the way down. And these are called your power rails, and the same on the other side. all connected. However, the ones in the middle, these all connected in lines, and these all connected in lines, but they're not connected across this gap. And that's for certain things like buttons or IC chips that you don't want to be connected, but you still want to form a circuit. And then obviously these aren't connected to each other, but you can with jumper wires. So pretty simple really. These five are connected, and these long rows are connected. This is the battery cable. This part plugs into your Arduino and this part is for the battery. It allows you to power your circuits without the need to use your computer as a power source. And these are a selection of jumper wires. They are provided so that you can connect your Arduino components and breadboard together. This component is called your piezo. It's a component that creates electrical signals when you apply pressure to it. Think of it like a knock sensor. So if you press it like that, you can attach it to things and that creates a response in, other, in whatever project you're using. There's also five push buttons. These are simple switch mechanisms. Electricity flows through the circuit when the button is pressed down, like that. And when the button is not pressed, it breaks the circuit, stopping the flow of electricity. You have one diode. A diode is a component that allows electricity to flow in just one direction. It's used to protect your circuit when you use specific components. The black band on this side, it's very small, but a little black band, indicates the negative side of the diode. Make sure it is the right way around in your circuit, otherwise your circuit will probably not work. The next one is this big metal object called your potentiometer. So you can twist it like this. A potentiometer is a resistor that you can control. 
Turning the knob on the potentiometer increases and decreases the amount of resistance, a bit like a tap and the flow of water. The next one is a strange object, it's called the tilt switch. If you shake it, you can hear a little bead inside it moving around. This is the part which allows you to open or close a circuit when tilted upside down. So you're making or breaking a circuit, like that. This one's called your thermistor. It is a type of resistor whose resistance varies significantly with temperature. The word is a combination of thermal and resistor. This one is an RGB LED, so red, green and blue, light emitting diode. So the longest leg is either your positive or negative, it's usually your negative, and then the rest are for your colours. And this means you can use its got the common pin and then the, ne the rest of the three legs can be mixed together to create a variety of different colours. And your last component is your low profile buzzer. This makes a buzzing sound and has one leg longer than the other. Oops. So this chunky component is called your servo. So your servo has integrated gears and a shaft that can be precisely controlled. You can hear it there. Standard servos allow the shaft to be positioned at various angles, usually between 0 and 180 degrees. So it can go from there all the way around to there and then stops. Servo motors have three wires. They have the power wire, which is usually the red one. And then they have a ground wire, which is typically black or brown, this one. And then a signal pin, which is typically yellow, orange or white. So in this case, it's orange. And then these are all the attachments you can change on your servo if you find them useful for different projects. So next is your bag of LEDs. You have 10 green and 10 red. Let's have a look. LED stands for light emitting diode and they are your basic electronic light. It's another type of diode which means that it only allows electricity to flow in one direction. That's why the legs are different lengths. So the negative leg, which is the shorter one, is called the cathode and the positive leg, which is the longer one, is called the anode. If you plug it in the wrong way around, it won't light up. So make sure you plug it in the, wrong, the right way. So these are your resistors. There's lots of different types. Resistors are used in a circuit to reduce the flow of electrical current and at the same time lower the voltage. Different components are measured in different units. So resistors are measured in ohms. You have 40 resistors in total, which are split into four groups of different values. So let's have a look at those different values. So you have 10 220 ohm resistors. The band colours are red, red, brown, gold. And these are great for using with your LEDs. There are 10 1 kilo ohm resistors. And the band colour for these are brown, red, black, gold. And then you have 10 10 kilo ohm resistors and the band colour for these are brown, black, orange, gold. And then you have 10 1 mega ohm resistors and the band colours for these are brown, black, green and gold. And these, use these if you want to play with capacitive touch. So now you know a bit more about all the components and what they do, a great video to check out is the intro to Arduino video on our website and also try loads of different coding projects that you can get your hands on because it's a great way to learn and all of our kits are Arduino compatible so you can play around with all of them. So I hope you enjoyed this video and have fun programming and coding for yourself. Yeah.